All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick's Strength and Power. So I've got a couple interesting stories for you guys today. The first story um, is going to be another follow-up on the issue of transgender powerlifters competing in powerlifting and being banned from certain powerlifting organizations from competing. Now, we talked about this particular case a few months ago when the story first broke about J.C. Cooper, who is a male-to-female transgender powerlifter. But recently, Vice News aired a piece about this specific uh, powerlifter. And they titled it, How Trans Athletes Are Fighting Back After Being Banned by USA Powerlifting. And in this seven minute video, they do kind of an in-depth profile on this particular powerlifter, JC Cooper. Um, they talk about her transition. They talk about her success as a powerlifter, her being banned from the USAPL. And then towards the end of the video, they show a protest at a USAPL meet where essentially JC Cooper is there and a couple other people are there chanting, share the platform. Um, and the protest is essentially this girl standing on the platform, not attempting her lifts. And that is the protest is her standing there and not lifting. Now, one key thing that I want to point out here is the like to dislike ratio on this video. 25,000 dislikes and only 1,000 likes. Now, that is a tremendously one-sided response to this issue. And I think it's very important to make note of how many people disagree with this way of thinking because when news channels run stories like this, they present these stories in a light that a lot more people agree with the trans athlete than people really do. Because these athletes are so outspoken and they do things like this and they have such a loud voice uh, because these issues often become such big stories, it seems like more people agree with this than they really do. But a 25 to 1 dislike to like ratio really goes to show that most people disagree with the line of thinking that it's fair for a male to female transgender to compete against people that were born females. Now, the other part of this that I found interesting is towards the end of this video, um, where they're doing the protest at the USAPL meet, they're having a conversation with the meet director or somebody who's in charge of that meet, basically asking, why is it fair for transgender athletes to be banned? And the meet director says it's because of the long-standing drug testing policy that the USAPL has had. And this is something that I find fascinating about this video and almost every other article written about this situation is they try to make it seem like it's a anti-trans movement by these organizations. They try to make it seem like these organizations are intentionally trying to marginalize transgender competitors when that's simply not the case. And they never mention the fact that the USAPL is a drug tested powerlifting organization. What does that mean? I can't let you continue in the meet. It's a fair play issue. Beyond that, I can't discuss it. How, how is it fair to ban trans lifters? All I can say is, like I said, it's a fair play issue based on our principles. They've been long standing with regards to drug use. And anything more than that, I can't say. It's not up for me to say. It means that taking hormones such as testosterone is banned and tested for. So even though this is a situation of a male to female transgender and they likely wouldn't be taking testosterone to become more feminine, they would likely be taking estrogen or other types of hormones that would also be banned. But more specifically, a female to male transgender powerlifter to answer the question of why they would be banned, they would be directly taking testosterone, which is probably one of the most advantageous substances to take if you're a competitive athlete, and that is banned by the USAPL. So to ask the question, why is it fair to ban transgender athletes from competing in the USAPL? Well, it's because the USAPL is a drug-tested powerlifting organization that has had these rules since their inception. And I think the better question would be, why would the USAPL make an exception for a transgender athlete and allow them to use hormones that are banned for all other lifters and allow them to compete? I think that's a much better question than why are transgender athletes being banned? I think the better question would be, why would an exception be made? So that's really like the one thing that bothers me most about these stories. And the one point that I constantly want to get out there when I make videos about this topic is in these specific cases, these are drug tested organizations. It's not an anti-trans thing. It's an anti-drugs thing. And even if these organizations weren't drug tested, the simple fact that this particular person was born a male has the bone structure, bone density, muscle mass, or at least some of the muscle mass of a male, so probably more so than a female, is competing against females who don't have that advantage. So even if the drug testing thing weren't part of the argument, there's still this whole other argument, which is a very, very good one. 
And I think it's actually very encouraging to see a dislike to like ratio on a video like this because it shows the vast majority of people, no matter what their political opinion is, they understand this logic. They understand the science behind it and they understand that this is unfair. And I don't think those 25,000 dislikes are all conservatives. I think this is liberals and conservatives agreeing that this is unfair. I don't think this is a one-sided thing. I think the majority of people just agree that this is a non-issue. This is not fair. It's not something that should be allowed. And I think that's a good thing that people are coming to an agreement on this. And I've even gotten messages after making some videos on this topic from transgender athletes that have said themselves they think it's unfair. And even though they enjoy powerlifting or enjoy bodybuilding or whatever, they say they would never compete in an event against someone that was born a female because they believe themselves that it's unfair. And then, of course, there's the other story we talked about weeks ago where the transgender female powerlifter set some world records, actually, in the 100% Raw Powerlifting Federation, which is also a drug-tested powerlifting federation. And this was a male-to-female transgender that set world records in the female division. And that story has been politicized to make it seem like she was just uh, unfairly stripped of these titles, when in actuality, the statement put out by 100% Raw is that this powerlifter did not let them know they were a transgender athlete, like they were supposed to on the entry form. In fact, they even said in their statement it wasn't till the drug test after the competition, which was a urinalysis test, so they had to pee in a cup, that they realized it was a trans athlete. So imagine their surprise, because they watch you pee in the cup to make sure you don't cheat. So imagine how surprised they were when they watched her pee in a cup. So it wasn't until after that urinalysis that they decided this athlete was in fact a male at the time the records were broken, biologically a male. So therefore, the records would not stand in the female division, which to me makes perfect sense. And unfortunately, here we are again talking about it because that vice piece stirred up so much controversy and so much conversation. I probably had more people sending me links to that vice video than any other video this week. All right, so enough of that. Let's get back into some bodybuilding news here. So in bodybuilding news, Branch Warren posted a photo on Instagram today. Branch Warren, we haven't seen him compete in several years, but he posted this photo with the caption, just doing a little modeling for official gasp and Oakley. And of course, the comments were going crazy asking Branch if this were a recent photo um, and if he were making a comeback or what his plans were for the future. Now, first of all, my understanding is that Branch Warren is retired. I, I don't think he's ever going to compete again on a pro bodybuilding stage. That's just what I've heard. So I don't think there's going to be a Branch Warren comeback anytime soon or ever. He's busy focusing on businesses like the Wicked Cuts uh, beef jerky business, which, by the way, I believe is doing fantastic because I'm a fan of that brand um, and I buy it all the time. And in addition to that, I don't think this is a recent photo. I mean, I've seen recent pictures of Branch um, at expos and stuff, and I've seen how his arms are looking right now. And the way his arms look in this picture, I don't think they look like that right now. Just based on some of the other photos I've seen, how full they look in this photo, how big they look in this photo, I don't think that's what he's looking like right now. I think this is an older photo that he just reposted um, for his GASP uh, sponsorship. Would I personally like to see Branch Warren make a comeback? Actually, no. I think Branch Warren is one of the smarter bodybuilders. He was starting to slip a little bit in placings. So he, did, he made the decision to retire before it really got too bad. He didn't retire when he was just straight up losing shows and doing horrible. He retired while he was still kind of on top. And people can still remember him as the Branch Warren that was winning Arnold Classics, taking top three at the Olympia. That gnarly, grainy, dense Branch Warren is still what people are going to remember him for. He didn't wait too long to retire and he didn't stick around too long. So I think he actually made a very smart decision in retiring when he did. And I don't think he needs to make a comeback. I think he's doing very well with what he's doing now. Um, and there's no reason for him to come back to a competitive bodybuilding stage. Now, the final story that I have for you guys today, and I will leave you guys with this story. I've never made a video since I've had my YouTube channel about Chul Soon. I mean, he's probably one of the most requested people to make a video about, but I always thought he was just kind of goofy. I always thought he was just a blatant liar. And he doesn't compete in the NPC or IFBB, so he's really not relevant to anything that's going on as far as bodybuilding news. So I've never talked about this guy before. And for a long time, um, there's been a lot of controversy about him, whether or not he's natural, um, because he constantly, constantly claims it. Now, I don't make Natty or Not videos, but this particular post bothered me, and a lot of people were sending this post to me. So this post is a picture of his natural bodybuilding transformation, as he claims, with the hashtag full natty, hashtag natural transformation, hashtag natural athlete, 
It's a photo of him looking to have gained like 100 pounds of muscle. And again, claiming to do that naturally. Now, the part that I have a problem with, and the reason why I want to mention this in a video, is right below those natural hashtags, he tries to sell you his training program. Now, this, in my opinion, is blatant deception just to try to sell this program. So I never make Natty or Not videos, but in my opinion, I don't think this guy's natural. And I don't like the way that he's selling training programs by implying that he is natural and implying that his training program is going to give you a similar result to the transformation that you see in this photo because it's not going to. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you believe that Chul Soon is natural? Do you believe he is uh, being honest here or not? Let me know in the comment section below. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.